stadium. What do you guys think is up with David? Huh? It sounds like he wants me to save something. Save you, save you, save you. Hello, my name is Ian McMystery, and today I am taking a look at this Scotch T120 EG Plus video cassette, which arrived to me in this really cool plastic sleeve. Might be hard to tell just by looking at it on a video, but trust me, this matte black sleeve is very plastic and it's very cool. The tape itself is labeled as miscellaneous, which is one of the least helpful things that you could put on a VHS label, challenged only by its brother here, which is labeled various. Even if I'm the one who recorded them, how am I supposed to tell these two tapes apart? But now, without further delay, let's go ahead and find out what secrets are stored on this tape, shall we? Puppy in my pocket, as cute as can be. Oh, is that a puppy in your pocket, or are you just happy to see me? Oh, it is a puppy? Never mind, then. Puppy's not very well, but someone special can make him better. Let's use the Magic Vet Care playset. Sometimes it can be a challenge to figure out when these tapes were originally recorded, but luckily for us, this one spills the beans rather early. This entire tape is full of Fox Kids broadcasts recorded during their 1997 Splashtastic tour, which I don't personally remember, but I bet it rings bells for a lot of people out there because this guy is all over these broadcasts. It looks like he's running around and terrorizing a zoo of some sort. And now let's get back to the show. Hey, we're just sitting here munching around with the sharks. We'll be right back after these messages. And now back to our show. Hey, we'll be right back after these messages. And now back to our show. We'll be right back after these messages. And now back to our show. Apparently we have a loser in the pool. What you don't realize is that we'll be right back after these messages and a few choice words from Sir Winston. Yeah, okay, that's enough of that. Uh, but I am excited to check out the Fox Box broadcast because it's been a hot minute since I've seen one. Spider-Man is rated Y because it's web-slinging fun for all Fox kids. Previously on Spider-Man. Hey! I'm losing my grip! I'm losing my spider powers! When I think Spider-Man, I think Tobey Maguire. There, there were Spider-Men before him, and there were Spider-Men that followed in his footsteps, but I really think that the first two Spider-Man movies were the closest I ever got to giving a shit about superheroes. So it's weird for me to just hop into this Spider-Man show, where Peter Parker isn't a nerdy, awkward guy, but is instead... Uh, an adult? Like, how old is this guy supposed to be? Dude is chiseled. Wow! I feel fantastic. My spider powers are back. The monster of the week in this episode is Hydro Man, who has the ability to control any body of water that's nearby. And he's also got a weird obsession with Mary Jane, who's just starting to break through in the modeling business. Here, your first professional gig, preserved for posterity, as requested. Oh, welcome, welcome to my gallery opening. I'm glad you were able to make it. I see you're interested in this photo over here. I call this one Mary Jane of the Jungle holding on to and peeing out of her giant water bottle schlong. And the bidding starts at $10,000. What's up, MJ? You've been turning me down right and left lately. I'm sorry, Peter, but with my career taking off, I, I just don't have the time. MJ, phone for you and make it ass bay, AB Bay. I'm sorry, I must have been a little distracted by the water bottle schlong. Did this lady just say naked ass face baby? And make it ass bay, AB Bay. Mary Jane doesn't want to be around Hydro Man, and she also doesn't really want to be around Peter Parker. And I'm assuming both of them are going to, you know, uh, respect her boundaries. I'm a big girl now. I can take care of myself. So stop following me. Well, she told Peter Parker not to follow her, but she didn't say anything about Spider-Man. <laughs> Come on, Peter. Peter's very suspicious of MJ's new photography friend, and maybe he thinks that, you know, he's not as nice as he appears to be, but I don't know, I kind of like them together. So leave me alone. At least I never ran out on you like your father did. Oh, see, they're cute. Of course, Spider-Man is there to save the day. I mean, that's why they pay him to be in the show. Most of the episode is Spider-Man saving the day. Let me give you a, a hand. Did he just turn into... Come? 
Honestly, this is not the worst show I've ever seen. I feel like a lot of kids probably loved this show. As an adult though, the writing is kind of driving me a little bit crazy. The itsy bitsy spider went up the water spout. Down came the rain to wash the spider out. Oh yeah, badass dude. I'm also very confused about these bubble physics. I don't think that's how bubbles work. Of course, Spider-Man comes to the rescue to save Mary Jane, after which she expresses her appreciation for being saved from getting horribly murdered. I appreciate the rescue, but I'm just a little tired of weird men making unscheduled appearances in my life. And that's when this episode takes an unpredictable turn. I don't love you. I never loved you. Damn each other, can't we work this out some other way? I have no idea what that was. I can't explain it. It looks like a show or a movie about cockfighting, and then before you know it, we're right back to Spider-Man. Oh shit. Sorry about the rain. Seems like you're having nothing but water problems lately. You know, right now, it really doesn't seem like a problem. Ew. Let's watch some commercials or something. I, I can't watch this anymore. I think this is the first time on Mystery Tapes that I'm watching a broadcast of kids' shows. Normally I'm watching boring adult shows that are filled with boring ads for adults talking about things like cars, deodorants, or diarrhea medicine. But this time I'm watching a broadcast for youths, which means that the advertising should be at least 50% more radical. I'll make you better newborn baby checkup. Mommy has a checkup kit to take good care of you. Making you all better is what I love to do. Ah yes, sick and dying children. A little shot of medicine, cause I'm your doctor too. Mommy made you better. When newborn baby checkup sick, mommy's here for you. Cause mommy has a checkup kit to take good care I'm not convinced that mommy is a medical professional. Uh, should she be injecting the baby with things? I thought this was just a checkup kit. Really though, that commercial's an earworm. A lot of these commercials have great jingles. Holy shit, was that Hydro Man? I always thought these Capri Sun commercials were pretty neat, and Liquid Cool is an awesome tagline. Liquid Cool. What's even crazier is that this is when they were debuting their strawberry kiwi flavor, which is one of my favorites. Take a rebound! It does stunts no other RC can perform! Oh man, I remember these commercials like it was yesterday. I wanted this thing so bad. I mean, it can do the sidewinder. Side Are you kidding me? Tyco Rebound does almost anything your twisted mind can come up with. Like hang time twists, 360 spins, radio control for blinding speed and incredible stunts. Battery pack sold separately. Tyco RC, maximum heat. There is only one Tyco Rebound. Now, if you thought that commercial was nostalgic, I think you're really gonna enjoy this next one. A truck full of sand was crossing a bridge in Watonka when a strange craft appeared and zapped it. Whoa! Ordinary sand became sand. This is one of those commercials that's really burned into my brain. Like I'm gonna go to bed tonight and all I'm gonna hear in my head is sand. It's a sand-like substance that molds like dough. It's not from Watonka. Sand. sand stretches and builds like never before in color. It's kind of like sand, but it's kind of not. New Nickelodeon Sand. Pods each sold separately from Mattel. You know, I don't think I ever got a chance to play with Zan. Could someone out there let me know what it was like? Was it anything like Floam? I remember Floam. While they definitely wanted to sell kids toys in 1997, it seems like they were more concerned with selling them food. Ready for a McDonald's cheeseburger? Can't wait, Ronald! It can kind of be easy to forget, but Ronald McDonald was a huge celebrity back in the day. I can't say that I see him around much these days, despite the resurgence of clown culture, but in 1997, he was always around to sell us 
his nutritious fast foods. Don't worry, I'll catch him. Oh, 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 come back here. Oh, uh -oh. Oh. <laughs> this is some high quality, lazy town looking advertising, but I do have a question. I get that the Hamburglar steals the burgers, but I don't get when he just decides to give them back. Let's see. <laughs> What's really weird is that there are McDonald's commercials that feature no food at all. They're simply here to subliminally tell your children that it's time to go visit Uncle Ronald for a hot meat circle. Grimace's room looks like a pig pen. Does it, Ronald? Yeah. Well, it does need a little work. I'll help. Oh, my. Vaguely sexual. <laughs> Ronald McDonald wasn't the only guy trying to force feed kids live on the Fox box, though. I was treated to a cornucopia of food ads while watching through this tape. Wish alphabets had even more marshmallow shapes. Your wish is my command. Now we've added swirled one, two, three marshmallows in alphabets land. There were a lot of cereal commercials from an animated alphabets ad. You got three wishes. Watch and see. New marshmallow swirls. One, two, three. More kinds of marshmallows than anyone. Nine courses. <laughs> Major yum. Sweet. To the most boring commercial for Apple Jacks I've ever seen. Need to eat breakfast. We are, mother. Apple Jacks in this DeLuca. I don't know why you girls eat those things. We do. <laughs> why? Mother, we just do. I do remember this one, though. I remember it airing, and I remember how boring it was. Kellogg's Apple Jack cereal is part of this complete breakfast. We eat what we like. <laughs> I think this next commercial is great because it really speaks to how we viewed childhood nutrition back in the day. Yow! How do they cram all that gram? Maybe there's this huge magnet. Okay, so you've got your nutritious bowl of golden grams, right? Maybe not the most healthy thing to be eating, but at least you're not eating a bowl full of marshmallows. That's a start. But you know what is healthy and pairs great with a bowl of golden grams? Now you can get a pound of free Oreo cookies with a coupon on marked boxes of golden grams. Free Oreo cookies by the pound for buying some golden grams. They don't make deals like this anymore. Or at least they really shouldn't. Skate City and the Roller Girls! We don't walk and we don't run. Skating everywhere is way more fun. Cool skates! We connect the ramps. <laughs> we made a city! <laughs> skate City! It was a magical time back then. The cereals came with pounds of free Oreo cookies. Spider-Man was fucking jacked. And Toys for Girls always involved makeovers in some form or fashion. At the Skate City! Never mind the logistics of getting your hair done and then immediately putting a helmet on and going down a high-speed skate ramp. The girls demand makeovers. Way more stuff, way more fun. Pizza. Skate City. And the Roller Girls. Skate City and the Roller Girls. Tower, salon, pizza parlor, phone booth, and other sets each sold separately. Man, I really love how product shots back then looked like they were just filmed in some sort of endless void. No set dressing or anything. What you see is what you get. What's so cool about these micro machines? They wow. move. They're new micro machines exploration sets. Well, hey, this entire commercial takes place in a void. Well, that's pretty cool. You can check out Lost Treasure Lagoon and find the buried treasure. Pirate gold. This has got to be intended for bathtub usage, right? Play with some micro machines while you're bathing with the boys. But don't forget, they float. New micro machines exploration sets. Float on. We're talking on dry land. They Holy shit, you can play with them on dry land? That's allowed? Think big, play small. We float. New exploration playsets come with both. Playsets and additional vehicle figure collections sold separately. New from Micro Machines. It's actually pretty cool. Would have loved to have it. The commercial is no replacement for the Micro Machines man, but the product itself, uh, pretty neat. Okay, full disclosure. I watch so many commercials on this tape that it's just not realistic for me to dwell on all of them. So instead, I present to you this quick little montage of my favorite discoveries. 
I saw a Barbie mermaid toy where you squeeze her fish crotch to produce bubbles. Dive in, surprise! She turns to pink before your eyes. Wow! I think it's pretty funny that they went through the trouble of sticking a mom in the background here of this commercial. You just can't let mermaid fun go unsupervised. That's number one rule as a parent. I'm free. I saw a commercial for Chuck E. Cheese that made me want to go there immediately. It's bullshit that it's for kids only. I'm an adult. I'm the one with the money. I don't know if I'm going to get another chance to point this out, but I want you guys to know that Chuck E. Cheese has been watching over us this entire video. He's over on my door right over there. Always just sitting there watching me. There was a really freaky M&M's commercial in here too. I don't think I'm a fan of any of the M&M's commercials really, uh, but this one in particular featured some very freaky CGI and did not make me want candy coated chocolates even in the slightest. <laughs> Flash some pecs. <laughs> I don't know which one's worse. Next up on the tape is an episode of Casper the Casper. Animated Series, and although the bumper promised spooky fun for all Fox kids, I really struggled to find anything spooky or fun in this episode. Well, I'm in the mood for my program. And I'm in the mood for hot kids. And I'm in the mood for love. The plot centers around Casper trying to make his ghost friends? Brothers? Are they brothers? Are they friends? Ghost brothers. Casper's trying to make his ghost brothers be nice so they don't get killed by a giant storm cloud that feeds on negativity. Oh, I'm a mood monster. I munch on that dark mood you ghosts get into. It's not really fun or spooky or interesting, really. The only observation I made throughout the entire episode was that I found it interesting that the whole thing took place inside this dreary, desaturated house in which the ghosts live. It's a very boring location, and I wish they'd used a color or two. The most fun thing for me was probably all of the physical abuse against Casper. That was a pretty good time. The scariest thing I saw during this episode was absolutely Polly Shore. Hi you guys, this is Polly Shore, and you'll never guess what's coming up. Next Saturday morning, Fox Kids is sending me to interview the Easter Bunny. Here, yeah, bunny, bunny. Why would children want to see Polly Shore on his hands and knees begging for the Easter Bunny during commercial segments of a Casper the Friendly Ghost broadcast on Fox Kids? I don't know. My only guess is that the Goofy movies were big around that time, so maybe they thought that kids would recognize the voice and want to tune in. I want to find out all about him. Like, how does he carry all those eggs and candy? I'm just interested, aren't you? You know, Polly, I can't say that I am, but thanks for asking. I mean, think about it. A little tiny bunny, he hasn't got any pockets, no fanny packs, nothing to hold all his candy in. I'm noticing that anytime Polly shows us his eyeballs, uh, there's either a funny color filter over it or we're way zoomed out. And I'm not trying to imply anything with that observation. So just leave it to me, Polly, to get to the bottom of this. So join me for my special, Polly's Hip Hop Saturday. Oh! morning long next Saturday on the only place that rocks kids Fox kids now honestly though I don't think Polly's on drugs I just think he doesn't really want to be there and who can blame him really bunny hey buddy buddy Jack, 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 candy. and the winner is Erie Indiana it's coming up next in a new hair raising adventure as this blastastic to 97 continues on the only place that rocks kids Kid. I've never heard of Erie, Indiana before. I wasn't really allowed to watch scary kid shows as a child, but at first glance, it looks like a type of Goosebumps or Are You Afraid of the Dark show. Sure, my new hometown looks normal enough, but look again. What's wrong with this picture? The American dream come true, right? Wrong. Nobody believes me but this is the center of weirdness for the entire planet. Thank you, little paper boy. 
The intro really sold me on this show, so I got settled in, I got comfy, and I was prepared to get scared. And then all of a sudden... What's your name? I don't know anything about Beetleborgs. Uh, I just know that this entire episode was nuts. I don't even know that I could explain the plot of this episode to you, uh, but there's uh, definitely a lot of explosions and a lot of really expensive looking visual effects. You're at my mercy. <laughs> Whoa, that was horrible. I was paralyzed. Also a lot of great dialogue. It kind of reminds me of Power Rangers, but with younger leading actors and also a ton of wacky side characters, all played by adults. Brunch is served. No way you cools not now, no how. Also, the kids all have superpowers, the best of which belongs to the bowl cut king here who can move things around with his magic fingers. <laughs> Anytime he started waggling those fingers around, I was cracking up. But the star of the show is this blue-faced man here. Anytime he is on screen, it is absolute chaos. If I was any brighter, my mom would have to call me Sonny. <laughs> I have no idea what his name is though. They were either calling him Father or Flubber, neither of which sounds correct. Now that's what I call heavy reading material. Flubber, we need your help right now. Hmm. Can you help us, Flubber? Mm, still not sure. I'm gonna go with Flubber. <laughs> Art! <laughs> I can't digest this episode. Like, it's complete nonsense to me. I think the kids lost their powers even though I see them using their powers. So they gotta go get their powers back even though they currently have their power. <laughs> Not very impressive. Even though I have no idea what's going on, this was actually still a pretty fun show to watch. There's a lot of wackiness going on to keep the kids entertained, although I'm not sure if that wackiness is necessarily good for child brain development. I bet the show produced a lot of little weirdos. Can you help us, Flubber? Let's play charades. The final show featured on this VHS tape is in the same vein as Beetleborgs. It's an episode of Power Rangers Zeo, or perhaps I should say it's part of an episode, because the tape comes to a close right in the middle of a clunky fight scene. And that's pretty much it. I hope you have enjoyed my review of this mysterious miscellaneous tape. At the end of it all, it was a nice compilation of Foxbox bumpers, some recognizable commercials, and a variety of shows that are sure to please any small child with a tiny brain. And hey, you know, I just realized that I didn't even mention the Twisted Turkey. Wanna shred with a Twisted Turkey? Okay. Enter the Fox Kids Frisbee to Special Sweepstakes, man. You can get the ultimate Frisbee experience and win a trip with three friends to Malibu Beach to jam with the world Frisbee champ, Arthur Coddington, and learn how to play like the pros. Plus, win tons of Frisbee discs. 300 others win the Frisbee Max Light and Slam and Vision Series disc, man. Hey, to enter, here's the drill. Just get us a postcard by April 11th. Your name and address to Fox Kids Frisbee this Best Sweepstakes. P.O. Box 230, Los Angeles, California, 90078. Oh, and one more thing. Party! Oh, I'm getting a little hungry. You know, if you're anything like me, it can be hard to know what to cook when you get peckish. And it can also be hard to go out and get the ingredients because your house is constantly surrounded by a sizable swarm of giant bees or other impossibly large insects. That's why I personally subscribe to today's video sponsor, HelloFresh. No longer must I brave the outdoors just to feed mine self and mine household because HelloFresh ships pre-portioned ingredients right to my door. Don't ask me how I get the 
box inside the house without getting attacked by giant bees because I don't have an answer for that. But HelloFresh has an answer as long as the question is, how do I cook delicious food at home without any of the hassle? Just follow the simple instructions on the included recipe cards, and before you know it, you've got a delicious meal that you can legally claim you cooked yourself. If you're tired of just hearing about HelloFresh all the time and you'd like to finally dive in and give it a try, go to HelloFresh.com and use code BRUTALMOOSE70 for 70% off plus free shipping. That's HelloFresh.com, code BRUTALMOOSE70 for 70% off plus free shipping. <laughs> deal with the shame of what I'd seen my dad doing. It was the last thing I ever saw. 